I did it. I hit a thousand subscribers. I've got 4,000 hours watch time. I'm monetized. But I've seen dozens of videos pop up with titles like YouTube changed my life with only 400 subscribers or why you need to start a YouTube channel. And I've watched a lot of them, but I gotta admit, everything feels pretty much the same. I started this channel on January 12th, 2024, and at the time of recording this, we're exactly six months in. So here's the stats. 1,334 subscribers, 4,886 watch hours, 86,000 views, and $47.63 of estimated revenue. Those numbers are wild to me. And, and now I turned on monetization like two weeks ago, so not much to be expected there. But the amount of hours, the amount of time that people have given me for the stuff I do on this channel is, I'm so grateful. It's overwhelming and I honestly don't really get it. Now, before we get into this, Cottonwood and I would like to put out just a little disclaimer. First of all, I'm incredibly grateful for the support that you've all shown me. Truly, it, it, it does mean so much to me, full stop. And all those other videos out there about how YouTube has changed people's lives, I believe you. I'm not trying to discredit what you're saying or the message that you're trying to give. See, anytime I try and talk more critically or give a more nuanced and complex idea, there's always, always gonna be somebody out there who thinks that I'm either just being negative or that I'm just trying to complain. And that's not what this is. So let's approach this with an open heart and an open mind and talk about the realities and the complicated nature that is starting a YouTube channel. I'm also gonna use a lot of I statements here because I don't wanna speak for other creators. This is just my experience. So when I say that, you know, YouTube hasn't changed my life, I think I mean it kind of in that way that like, you know, when you hear like a rich person say like, oh, like money can't buy you happiness or like money won't solve all your problems. And you're like, yeah, cool. But like, if I'm gonna have problems and I'm not gonna be happy, can I, give me the money. Still give me the money though, right? YouTube is, is kind of like that insofar as like, it hasn't changed my life. I still have all the same problems and issues that I had before I started. It's just that now I have this funny little channel to sort of mess around with and to, you know, help me process some of that stuff or ignore it maybe. It's so friggin' hot out. I started my YouTube channel <clears throat> for three reasons. I wanted to have an online presence that I could point potential clients towards. I'm a photographer and, and videographer and to increase my networking possibilities. Secondly, I wanted to generate another stream of income, which in itself could lead to multiple income streams. And I wanted to do that using social media, but I hate all the other social media platforms. And the third reason is that I, I've, I've been obsessed with YouTube since 2006. I remember so clearly the creators I first started watching and how amazing they were. And, and it was so cool to me that you could just have this platform to do whatever you want with. I can't tell you the amount of times I almost started a channel and it basically just seemed to me like, okay, if I'm not gonna do this now, I'm never gonna do it. I have all the gear, I have all the know-how, let's make a channel and, and get creative. That's what I came into it with, which uh, is a lot. The hope of making friends, of making money and of tapping into my creative spirit kind of big goals, right? So, you know, I would say that like, more or less, I've achieved certain elements of that creative endeavor, right? I mean, I do have followers, I am making a little bit of money, and I do feel a little bit more creative. But there's a long way to go. And there's a few things that have come up for me as I've been thinking about this idea of this video. YouTube is like high school. There's all these weird rules that are never really told, they're just sort of explicit, and you're supposed to kind of know them. And you know, there's all these clicks and it's weird because you don't know what you have to do to be a part of them either, but you kind of just go with the flow and, and hope to be a part of them and, and you don't want to ruffle any feathers. And God forbid you step outside of your niche because you don't know what's gonna happen. So in high school, you go about your day, you go to class and you're portable maybe and, and you go home, but then you have to take all this work home with you and you have to do it there and you're expected to get it done. And if you don't, then you fail or you get held back. With YouTube, you finish your nine to five job and then you come home and you make silly videos all night. But rather than fail and flunk out of school, 
if you don't do it, then you just don't get your metrics up and you never get to get to where you want to get to. What's interesting is that in either case, you can kind of just skate by, right? You can do the bare minimum and get some views and, and get your channel going, or you can do the bare minimum and get a C average and pass. One other thing is that there's bullies in both. There's more on YouTube than there was in my high school, but uh, there's still bullies. Number two is that YouTube breeds mediocrity and a little bit of laziness in the sort of mid to low tier creators. I say mid to low tier creators because obviously there are exceptions to the rule, right? And there are like these huge channels that do things completely their own way and they blow up. And those are usually the absolute biggest, right? The ones that truly find a creative way and their creative voice. But for smaller creators, oftentimes the pathway to success feels a little bit like just fit in, make the thumbnails you know work, make the video types that you know are gonna get views, and just try and get monetized and build a little middle-class YouTube life for yourself. Ideally, right now, with my channel, what I would like to do most is to start making more of these kind of video essays where I talk about something that's compelling to me, something that's important to me, and I use the tools within my niche, which is, you know, cameras and lighting and, and color grading and all that stuff to help me effectively tell the story. And there's creators I look up to that do exactly this. And then from there, I can make BTS videos about how I went about doing it and teaching these things and still do the camera reviews and stuff like that, but do it my way. Problem is that, you know, when I put out a, a video about using an iPad to edit my videos, I get 24,000 views. But then if I put a really meaningful video, to me at least, about trying to find my creative purpose, I get less than a thousand views. So, so basically, I've been rewarded for putting out content that's less meaningful to me, but you could argue more useful to real people. The easy fix here is actually just to put out really, really good content that people can't ignore, like to make things so good that it doesn't matter if it's in your niche or if it's a trending topic that it's just like, so compelling that you you kind of have to watch, right? And that's what the, the really good YouTubers are doing. But this is where the fear kicks in because you've kind of put yourself into this cage, right? Where you have created an audience and built a channel around one kind of thing. So the idea of, of getting out of that feels kind of scary, even though there's nothing really holding you in. I mean, the door's open and you could get out. It's just that sometimes you're not sure what's gonna happen when you do you might get attacked by a giant golden retriever. So when I say that YouTube didn't change my life, what I mean is that all of the things I just discussed, all the feelings and problems and everything that I discussed here, they were in my life before I started YouTube, in my personal life and my professional life. Because you bring your problems with you, right? And now, they, they haven't gone away, I've just found a new way to explore them and express them. So YouTube didn't, change my life fundamentally, but it did give me a new way to look at my life. Maybe that's the big takeaway, that something like this isn't actually supposed to change your life, at least not this quickly. What it can do though is help you to better understand what it is you want out of all this, and to move more quickly towards the things that bring you joy in this messy, confusing life. So maybe that's what I'm getting out of all of it. I don't know. See you next time. Come on, Cotton. Let's go to the park. <laughs>